In today's gaming news, Bungie assures fans that Destiny has plenty of content, we get over 30 minutes of Rainbow Six Siege gameplay, and no, Rust isn't cancelled, but they're making a new game, and that makes people angry. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. My name is Force, here with your day's gaming news. First up today, there's a bit of concern about the amount of content that is going to be in Destiny at launch. It was recently revealed that the game will only have one explorable location per planet. And as of now, we know the game will consist of Earth, the Moon, Mars, and Venus. And with each one of those planetary bodies only having a single explorable area, people are a bit worried that there's just not going to be a lot to do. Well, in response to this community concern, Bungie community manager Irk responded to a NeoGAF thread saying that Destiny's pretty big. It's the biggest game we've ever made by far, and we're sort of known for making games that you can play for months, years, and even decades if you're a little bit dead Dedicated. He went on to say that with Destiny, we're looking to exceed what we've done before, not just in terms of scale, uh, the moon being our smallest destination, but in terms of scope and breadth of activities. So he's basically trying to assure us that there's a lot of content to be had. And even though we've explored old Russia on Earth, it's also worth noting that we didn't even have access to all of it. There were blocked off locations, just like there was blocked off locations uh, up on the moon's explorable area. Now, even with this reassurance, I'm I'm still a bit concerned that come launch day for Destiny, there's not going to be enough to do, but we don't know. We've only gotten but a sliver, reportedly only about 10% of what the final game is going to have in terms of availability, content, locations, all of that. And honestly, this reassurance isn't reassuring me that much, but... We, we just don't know at this point, and it's just going to be a waiting game, so there's no sense in fretting now. Next up, we've got over 30 minutes of gameplay footage for the upcoming title Rainbow Six Siege. Now, this is the next installment in the Rainbow Six franchise. Uh, as always, there's going to be a heavy focus on team play and realism, but another big component of Siege will be a focus on multiplayer, as well as destructible environments are supposed to be a big, big selling point here. And after watching the gameplay, boy oh boy, are there destructible environments. The entire footage... Uh, takes place in a match in a suburb in this residential location in which we've got like a hostage situation and we've got the police force coming in and trying to take care of the terrorist or whatever and they're shooting holes in walls blasting and just entire walls down and then even patching them back up with these temporary structures to provide for a bit of cover uh it looked pretty cool a very methodical slow paced thought out gameplay as opposed to the crazy run and gun that you get in a lot of a lot of modern day shooters and it's something that i'm just again I hadn't really heard anything about this game prior to today, but uh, I want to see more footage. It it's, it's, looks promising. A Rainbow Six of old holds a dear place in my heart, and if they can even live anywhere up to that, then fantastic. And last up in news today, Rust developer Face Punch Studios recently revealed a brand new project that's currently in prototype by the name of Rift Lite. The game is described as an arcade shooter that can be played with a gamepad or mouse and a keyboard, and it has loot and other light RPG elements with character levels, abilities, and talent trees, and the game is all around supposed to be bright and colorful. Now, upon announcing this prototype, this game that's in super early development, uh, the internet flipped its shit, went completely bonkers. Why? Because they hate colorful gameplay? Ga they hate colorful games? No, no, that's not why. Because Face Punch Studios isn't done Rust. Rust is still in early access, it's still in development, the game is far from complete, and the internet is very mad about this fact. Now in response to the uproar, Gary Newman himself came out and posted an article in which he said, are we crazy? Are we doing it wrong? Should every person in the company be working on the same thing? Should HBO make one TV show at a time? Should Warner Brothers make one movie at a time? Well, Mr. Newman, I would respond by saying, you are crazy, and you are doing it wrong, in the sense that you assumed the internet is not insane. Because w when you announce a new project with one that people have spent money on that's out an unfinished, the immediate response is gonna be, how could you be working on what project we spent money on this and it's not finished, you gotta finish it as fast as possible, that's all you can do! That's what the internet thinks. That's what the, in the collective mind of people who respond in videos, the type of people who are responding to your articles about prototypes, about new things, new ideas that you have that you're excited for, 
they're not gonna be happy. And this is the response you can expect 100% of the time. This is what, no matter who you are, whether you're Gary Newman or any other developer, whether you're Face Punch Studios or not, this is the response you will get because people are freaking crazy. Uh, he went on to say things like, you know, Apple invests money that they've got in prior products in new and upcoming products. And that is very much so the case. But the business workings, the people who are typing comments on articles are not people who fundamentally get this or are just they're not fundamentally okay with it obviously and i get how people can be upset because i spent money on this thing i expect you to be working on this thing but the truth is developers they're capable people who can multitask and when i think the root of this problem is early access is kickstarters is founders programs as if the community itself wasn't entitled enough and I, I, can, I consider myself fairly entitled feeling at times, as if the gaming community wasn't entitled enough. This whole, whole recent wave of us spending money on things undone or upcoming promises has given a greater sense of entitlement and feeling of ownership behind the company in that I spent money on this thing, I decide what you do, you need to finish this first and foremost. But here's the true hard facts. We are not investors. I do not own a share in stock in Face Punch Studios, even though I spent money on Rust Early Access. What I bought and what you bought was access to something undone. We did not buy and dictate where those funds go. Unfortunately, you purchased an undone project with the hopeful promise that it will eventually get finished and you'll get a copy of that finished game. But that doesn't mean Unfortunately, that all of the money that you spent on that unfinished project is going poured just into that unfinished project. And buyer beware, I guess, is the only phrase that I can come up with. And that's going to do it for today's episode of the show. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you thought about any of the topics discussed here today in the comment section below. Uh, do you feel like Destiny will have enough content, things to do at launch? Check out that Rainbow Six Siege gameplay. What do you think about it? And Face Punch Studios? They have got Rust in early access. They also have other ideas. How do you feel about that and the whole everything we talked about here as well? Thanks, guys, so much for watching. Hope you have a fantastic day. Once again, this has been Force, and you have just been Force-fed. Um, well, I spent money on this thing, so I guess that pretty much makes me, like, CEO. So you guys need to stop working or having any ideas that aren't about Rust because I'm the CEO and you're going to listen to me. Okay? Okay?